Right, well, I've just arrived back from Torrington, North Devon, where I've done an evening with Gavin Cromwell, so I've just done a load of readings. Um, jumped in the car, it was, it was a nightmare to get away from him. I had to sneak out the back exit, and I made my way straight down here to Plymouth. So I'm here to do this investigation at this cinema, this wonderful place. So. Duncan, you, you work in the real cinema, and obviously you've been... How long have you been working here now? Uh, about six years. OK. And you say you've heard some strange things happen to you here? Yeah, I've seen a, seen a man in the uh, main screen, screen one. Okay. Do you want to describe him for us so get an idea? Um, yeah, basically there were a couple of people in the screen and I was stood at the top of the stairwell and as the last person come down the stairs, in my sight, um, vision, on the other side of the, by the wall there, I could see a man, but I couldn't see anything from the waist down, just from the waist up. Okay. And it was all black clothes. He had a very, like, black stubbly face. But very dirty and it was um, like a granddad's cap on was black okay. with a short peak. And you right. like, blink and he was gone. I'd be interested to see if this boy goes into some of the screens in the cinema because I mean it's a very excited spirit and I think for for films to be played on big screens will be a real draw for him to go and see this. Um, It does feel quite a recent spirit rather than talking like 1800s or anything like that. I, just, I, I want to bring him a little bit more into the 20th century. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm finding it hard to pin it down. It's very boisterous. And I think he will go to the one of screens. Probably not one, it's either two or three he'll go to. If you're the spirit person that's here with us, just step forward towards the table. Use the energy from those around it to move the glass. You can see the item on the table. Just move it towards the voice that you hear. Can you hear me? Can you push the glass towards me if you can hear me? Can you hear me? Are you a skeptic or a believer, Marcus, firstly? Um. I don't know, I'm probably, I'm probably a believer because of, of, of the weird things that happened yeah. when I was a child. So, but I'd never ruled anything out, to be honest. So, first time as a paranormal investigation? Yeah. Um, uh, have you enjoyed it? That's the main oh, thing. Yeah, it's been, it's been really good. So, scary for you or just just um, a little bit unnerving? Not, not so much scary, it's just strange, you know, it's, it's, it's weird. Oh, you were involved in the glass donation earlier. Yeah. And something personal came through for you. That I mean, did that unnerve you a little bit, or it did because I, I obviously I've, I've seen it before. Most haunted where they do the glass, and I've always thought oh, I would have been pushing it. But I know that was hardly touching the glass, and I know the rest of us hardly touching it. But it was just moving around all the time. Okay, so we just we just been called up here now. This lady, what's your name again, sir? Rispa. Rispa. Rispa has been. Uh, Pinched really severely, actually. I, don't know. I haven't seen anything like this on an investigation before, to be honest with you. And it almost looks like little child kind of pinches, but quite vicious, actually. I mean, but saying that, is it too high up to be a small child? It's really bad. I mean, how does it feel? It looks really sore. It's okay at the moment, but it, it, it sort of comes and goes. It feels like every so often I'm getting pinched again. And more little bruises are developing. Um, yeah, there was one bruise after we, we were in screen two, mm. in the circle. Mm -hmm. I felt my arm was being pinched. And then when we got into th uh, screen three, it started again. So you haven't been in screen two or three yet. So I'm interested to see what they come across. But has it happened when you come out of there? Or just in them screens? Well, it got better. And then it started a, a little bit in the, the, the toilets here, mm. and, but not for long. And it started up when I sat here again, but now it's gone. See, when we get pinched and stuff like that on investigation, it is usually down to child activity. You know, child spirits playing up, being a bit boisterous, um, being a little bit nasty perhaps, that you're on their patch and stuff like this, or they, they're feeling, um, I don't know, perhaps let down by adults in their lifetime. Um, so they're being quite vicious, but that looks really nasty. I mean, I've never seen that before. Straighted kind of actor. Uh, I think this is why I took the project on in the first place to come here. I'll try and get a name for him if I can. But I am definitely getting the kind of 1850s, 1860s vibe with him. Kind of looks like Charles Dickens to me, because that's the best thing that I can think of. He's got a kind of brown beard and the dark hair on the sides here, and a little bit of a comb over on top. 
um, all cravatted up. Um, it, to me, it's the suit that he was buried in that he's wearing. This is kind of uh, darker than the suit. It's quite brown and velvety. Um, okay. My heart's racing really fast now. Gavin, enjoy, enjoying your break, mate. Mm, a lovely veggie burger. Thanks All right, do you want to just let us know exactly what's happened this evening? You're in yeah. the real cinema. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, fantastic. I, mean, I went up to screen one, and the first thing that kind of came to me was a character called John. Like a double barrel kind of second name, like Newman. Something like that. John Newman, Sir John Newman. Victoria man, very fond of Charles Dickens looking. And he gave me the impression of the place being on fire. I could smell flames, I could smell burning. And the place looking like a theatre because I picked up on the gold leaf. I reckon they have gold leaf on the interiors. But a bit on this. A bit later on then, um, there was a lady, a female, a female in the room, not coming all the way into the room, but sobbing, crying, very upset, almost like a, um, an actress, quite suicidal, in a long kind of chiffony dress. Lots of people were seeing different colours, were seeing like black, and seeing her in the red and white and all of this. Um, and to be honest, when I seen it, it was it was pretty white looking. You know, I don't want to say a stereotypical lady in a white dress, but it was. She had like a long kind of chiffony white dress, crying. And this is what I like on an investigation. I want um, the crowd, if you like, to get involved in it. Maybe there's a glass well in it, then. really good glass well actually. Um, I opened it properly, done the protection. And there was two guys, two girls. Um, I didn't sit in on it, but I stood above it, um, like I said, to do the protection. And they got a lot of results actually, but I didn't say a word all the way through it, and this is what we like. And even one of the guys, Nan, came through on it. It was a very personal message to him. And um, again, psychic didn't have anything to do with it. But as a psychic, it's great to see something like that. People that come to an investigation that's perhaps never done this before. Well, they said they've never done it before. And then they get a result like this. This is what it's all about, it's about having an experience. And that was great, that was fantastic.